I was at a point where I was continually putting my gun in my mouth or thinking about wanting to do myself in. And you get to a point where you want it to end, but you don't know how to end it. Uh, I was a police officer for uh, 15 years. Some of the best things about being a police officer, look, I enjoyed um, the people I worked with, um, your mateship, and, and genuinely coming across victims that you could help. When you first joined the job, you sort of switched off because you were excited about what you saw and it was, you know, it's an exciting sort of lifestyle, but then it starts to build up and <coughs> it takes its toll. So the time that really affected me was a, uh, a motor vehicle accident. A lady was um, trapped in a car and the car was on its roof and she couldn't get out and her legs were trapped by the sunroof and the car burst into flames and she was on fire and I um, got the extinguisher and put her out but she was deceased by that time so um, just what I smelt and heard and saw uh, had a, a huge impact on me. Uh, sorry. I was at a point where I was going back to the scene for sort of two years after. I would go out by myself and walk around and I actually found her wristwatch once and it was burnt and destroyed and I kept it. It's something that I can't let go of. I actually go past the site and I, you know, I blow it a kiss and I, you know, silly ways of dealing with it. I didn't know a lot about PTSD um, until I saw a, a close colleague start to struggle. It was sort of really impacting him and he, you could see he was getting quieter and, and it just went downhill from there. It's sort of the next few months he, he was done. Depression kicks in and you, you're, you're very upset all the time or you're extremely angry. That's how I found it. And, and then suicidal thoughts. Um, there's one, one instance in particular where I did my wife had gone to work and my youngest daughter was inside and I went and opened the gate and she, you know, my wife drove off and I just thought, I'm going to hang myself today. And I went over to the shed and I picked the point and I had a, a rope on the ute and I was going to go back to the car and, and my daughter came out and asked me what I was doing and it snapped me out of it. When I left, um, my, yeah, there was a lot of uncertainty, um, what I was going to do and what the future held. The things that have helped me, um, there's been some colleagues that have been supportive. I had a really good psychologist. Just being able to talk to genuine, honest, nice people um, that genuinely cared. The process of reaching out to a, uh, like a solicitor, um, yeah, it, it was a big decision. You worry about the future because uh, everyone's got mortgages and their kids and everyone to look after as well and definitely need an advice. First found out about Law Partners through a colleague that had dealt with um, yeah, Law Partners and they highly recommended it. Um, yeah, that, that was the way I went. The impact of Chantel, uh, from the first day it was just genuinely nice support. She has empathy and tries to understand where you're coming from and she cares. I felt like everything was in good hands and it was just something I didn't have to worry about. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, as I say, meeting a genuine, honest, supportive person was yeah, what I needed. Mm. I thought there was you know, some sort of light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, well life now is um, a lot better than, than it was in the previous few years. Um, I think keeping busy and, and finding something else to do um, has helped me, but uh, there's still triggers there and still depression and yeah, loneliness. And I um, own a, a, a large sheep farm um, just out of Bathurst, so yeah, getting, uh, <laughs> getting fences fixed and yeah, all that sort of stuff. Just, just keeping busy does me, you know, and spending time with me dogs and yeah, just getting the farm up and running and looking forward to grandkids. I don't know when that'll happen, but. <laughs> That'd be nice, yeah.